Well, good day, everybody. Pastor Kevin here, bringing you today's Matthew devotion. Um, you know, after summing up these two episodes, the one on the storm and then the demoniacs, um, you know, we've gone through the text. So I was trying to think of what maybe links it, what might be useful to talk about. Uh, and I think one of the things is just reasonable fear. Um, at the end of the the storm narrative, you have the disciples asking, who is this man that he can basically control the, the storm, the, the winds and the sea? And at the end of the demoniacs, you have the city people, or basically shepherds rushing away because they just lost all their, their, their uh, pigs. And they're going in the city, and the city coming out and asking Jesus to leave. <clears throat> and I think those are both reasonable responses in the face of the power they saw. Um, granted, there may not be ideal responses, but they're reasonable. Uh, and part of me today is just wanting to ask you is, if you were to describe your fear of the Lord, what would that look like? Because uh, I think it's one of those things that we, sometimes we downplay a little bit, um, uh, Sometimes I think we get a little bit too much like God's this doting grandfather, um, just ready to give you everything you want. And I think we lose a little bit of that captured understanding of his absolutely unlimited power. Um, when we think of God, which is very important what we think when we think of God, how do we recognize, how do we rationalize, actually, that power with the goodness that's in him and such? Because, the tr truth be told, there's a lot of things in the Bible where God uses his power in ways that I think confuse us or throw us off. Um, and whereas, I mean, being the creator of the universe, he has full, I mean, it's, it is his pot on the wheel, so to speak. Um, but there's part of us that is repelled by that idea. And here you see Jesus wielding this power. Um, and you know the end of this story. You know that it gets to Jesus being crucified. Something that, for all intents and purposes, he could have come up with another way. We could, we could presume. <laughs> Let's just presume for a second. Um, of snapping fingers, making everything right, so to speak. But he didn't. And we see these, these moments of his power being unleashed. Um, and, and granted, I, I would argue it is for good. It is for the good of his creation. And I, I oftentimes think we don't, do we ever tremble at that? Uh, in the sense of man, God has power over life and death. A king has power over life and death. My life and death. And there, there comes this moment where do we recognize, no, it's his will. Truly, the, the prayer and the Sermon on the Mount is your will be done. And that includes with my very life. Um, those are powerful things. And I think that kind of understanding of what you fear can be helpful. And also, when you, put, when you actually... <laughs> When you compare it to the other things that you you really do fear, like you, you might be anxious in the day, you might be worried about kids, you might be, um, I, I often use that one because I am, I'm worried about my kids, I always want them to um, lean into Jesus and, and so forth, but they're, they're out on their own now, and there's a lot of influences in their life. You may be afraid of just the safety of, of your loved ones, or um, your job, um, or maybe it's something regarding your health. And those are fears that sometimes take the lead role in our lives. And I just want you just for a moment to remember that your God is bigger than all of those things. And there's a level of what I'll call respectful fear of him. And that like he, it, <clears throat> trusting God is trusting him with everything, everything, your very life, your children, your workplace, your anxiety, your health. <clears throat> and oftentimes I think those fears ratchet above what we, how we should be looking at God. 
Um, yeah, and, and God is good. And that's that's the thing is that when, when there's this idea of the fear of the Lord in the Bible, I think when you understand that God is good, that fear of the Lord, you it becomes a comfort. It's like, no, there is no one greater. There is no power greater. There is no one better. There is no one um, who is as good. So it can realign and recalibrate how we how we see God and understand him and understand all of our other fears in light of him rather than trying to put our fears above that spot that um, he should be in, if that makes any sense. So um, maybe some of you are, are uh, well, I guess it just depends on where you are today. Um, but there are there is a, a, a good and wholesome thing to be having this rational and respectful and honoring fear of the Lord because what is happening in these just these two texts you're seeing that God has through even through his son through through his son who incarnates for us he has Jesus has all the powers um, available to him in over nature over demonic powers and the demons know it by the way I mean that that should be a simple that <laughs> If the, if the demons know it, man, should we. Um, because it just seems like, hey, hey, have you come before your time? Are you going to be, are you going to torment us? <clears throat> and the whole point is, um, we should probably be thinking about, well, maybe we should, we should be considering uh, when we come face to face with Jesus, when we, when we continue to do, um, to go back and forth to the cross in our daily lives, maybe we should have a little bit of that, of that humility. Um, that comes with this this rational and respectful fear. God is is the creator of everything. Everything that you see that's beautiful, that came at His hand. And I think um, it's a good day to to maybe just think about it. Take a moment today. Um, maybe you know, get on your knees and just, Father, maybe I've been not giving you the reasonable, respectful fear that you deserve. And, and I'm fearing other things instead. I'm fearing my financial position. I'm fearing my health. I'm fearing these other things when in reality, you are above all of them. Uh, so today's the day to do that. Okay? All right, let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this day. We, we thank you um, that you do have all power and all authority because our whole lives are intended to trust you. Help us trust you more and more such that the fear of the Lord is in us. And it's, it's a good thing. It's not a negative thing. It is a, we trust you more than we trust anything because you have the power to resolve all of our ills. You have, you have shown your power to take away our cosmic problem with our own sin and brokenness through your son on the cross. I just pray that your spirit would go with us today and remind us um, that that you are to be feared in this good and wholesome, uh, honorable way. We want to do that. We know that you are good. We know that you love us from what we've seen and we read in your scripture. Help us to, to really come to terms with that and help us to realign our other fears and our other worries uh, in that light. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we'll see you next time.